Ahoy, boyos! It be your old pal Coppin Grim here, and today we're gonna talk pirate history. <laughs> in specific terms, we're gonna talk about the pirate that ushered in the golden age of piracy. The man that inspired the likes of Blackbeard. Today, we talk about the man, the myth, the pirate king, Henry Avery. A man when handed a raw deal, took his fate into his own hands, robbed the seas blind, and disappeared into the night to retire. And he did it all in only two years. But I'm getting ahead of myself, though. Better known as Captain Long Ben to his crew and mates, Henry Avery led the greatest pirate heist to ever be seen in the late 1600s. He started off as a privateer for the English crown, working on behalf of the Spanish to rob French treasure ships. However, once moored in a port town of Spain, the writ of privateering never arised, and the wages Avery and his fellows were promised never surfaced. It turns out the whole plan had changed. There would be no privateering, and the whole ship and crew of the Charles II were not allowed to leave the port and return to England. So Avery got his best mates together and staged a mutiny on the night of the 7th of May, 1694. It was a bloodless mutiny, and once at sea, Henry Avery let the ship's original captain and 15 other men go. Then he renamed the ship to Fancy and set off to rob Indian and Muslim trading ships across the Indian Ocean. However, in 1695, Avery got word of a massive Indian treasure fleet returning from Mecca after the annual Muslim pilgrimage. The fleet was fat with silver, gold, gems, ivory, furs, exotic drink, and so much more. In August 1695, Avery and his small pirate fleet caught up with the tail end of the treasure fleet. First, they raided the ship Fatah Muhammad which didn't want to face the wrath of the Fancy's 46 cannons. They seized in total about 60,000 British pounds on that vessel, worth about 12 and a quarter million pounds by today's standards. However, it wasn't enough for old Cap and Avery, no sir. He set off again in pursuit of the fleet and came upon the Ganji Sawai only a few days after sailing. The Ganji Sawai was a fierce opponent as she had over 80 guns upon her massive frame. However, when the ship set to fire a warning shot at the Fancy and her fleet, the cannon they were using exploded in a massive malfunction. Chaos fell across the Ganji Sawai, and seeing his chance, Avery opened fire with his cannons in a fierce broadside and crippled the mainsail of the Indian ship. The pirate fleet of Cap and Avery subjected the Indian treasure ship to a three-day-long orgy of violence. They tortured every crew member and passenger until they broke and surrendered all of their valuables. By the end of it, Avery seized over 500,000 British pounds worth of treasure, which today is worth about 102 million if you adjust for inflation. Avery and his mates had successfully pulled off the biggest heist in all the pirate history. Henry knew that he and his men would be wanted across the globe, so they set off to a sleepy colony where no one would think to look. The colony of Nassau in the Bahamas. While the East India Company scoured the African coast searching for Avery, he disappeared from the Indian Ocean. Once in Nassau, Avery gave up the fancy to the local governor, alongside with a massive bribe for him to keep his mouth shut. He then made a return for his native Scotland. He and his crew made landfall in Ireland in June of 1696. He bought a horse off a local farmer and rode into the night. He was never seen again. There be conflicting reports of what exactly happened to Avery. Some say he was robbed and died penniless. Others say he took up the sail and sabre in 1697 and became the Pirate King of Madagascar. However, 
There be no evidence to either claim. It's believed that he simply disappeared, assumed a new name, and lived out the rest of his days a wealthy man. It would be the stories of Cap and Avery that would inspire a new generation of pirates that would usher in the golden age of piracy between the 1710s and the 1720s. A foundation of a pirate republic that's ideals and structure would go on to serve as partial inspiration to the formation of the American Republic some 50 years after. All right, mateys, that'd be enough storytelling for one day, I. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, let all Grim know, I Subscribe, hoist the like button, all that typical YouTube shenanigans. But until next time, boyos, I be Cap'n Grim of the Antelope, and I'll see you all upon the Sea of Thieves, I <laughs>